Hi everyone. Today's Salesforce Development Day 30th. So let's see what are we going to learn today. So we'll quickly go through the previous session overview. We'll talk about the cron expression. And then we'll talk about the trigger, trigger syntax, trigger example. And what are the trigger events? And what is the trigger context variables? And then we'll have a conclusion trial head leaves. Now quickly, what did we learn in last session? Schedule class. Batch class and schedule class. And how to schedule a batch class we have seen from the UI point of view. Now today we are going to see cron expression. Before that, let's see with the example here. So let's take a one scenario here, implement a schedulable batch class to update the lead source to Dreamforce. Now, if I go to the Salesforce, on the lead level, we have a lead source field. So that lead source field, we will be updating to the Dreamforce. Now let's open one of the record here. And similarly object over here, the lead. Lead source is here, right? Lead sources, it has a web, phone inquiry, partner referral, purchased other list. Now let's see whether we can up update the lead source. Now, last class we have written this one and today we are going to write a new schedulable batch class. So last time what we did is we have written the batch class here and we call that batch class from the schedulable. So that's what we have done it in the last class. Now today I'm going to merge both of them. I'm going to use the database.batchable interface as well as I'm going to use the system dot schedulable in a same class. These two will be in same class. Now let's go ahead and create a new one, new Apex class. Let's say that it's a schedulable batch, schedulable batch. Now here in this class, I'm going to use the two interfaces. Now let's use the access modifier is global schedule schedulable batch and implements database dot batchable s object and then as well as i'm going to use the schedule level as well as i'm going to use the schedule level usually if it is a schedulable different here then we will write a system dot schedulable but whereas here I can write comma, I can directly write a schedulable. Schedulable. Now it is giving me the error. The first one is a schedulable execute method it is expecting. First of all, invalid type database. It is expecting the execute method for the schedulable as well as it will expect the batchable method start, execute, finish. Now, total four methods we have to write. Total four methods we have to write. Three methods are for the batchable. One method is for the execute. One method is for execute. Now, both will be having a execute both will be having a execute method. Now, if I write a database.batchable execute, will that be enough? Schedulable will be looking into that execute because I already have a schedule. I already have a execute method in the batchable. I already have a execute method in the batchable. Cannot schedulable call the same method? No, it cannot. 
it cannot because overloading now you see here execute method batchable dot execute method how many parameters it is expecting it is expecting the parameter which is a database dot batchable context comma list whereas schedulable is expecting the execute method with the one parameter and that parameter is also expecting the input as a system dot schedulable now system dot schedulable this does not have this has a different parameter this has a different parameter that means execute method of the schedulable has a different parameters and batchable batchable interface has a execute method and that has a different parameter so you need to implement it to methods now let's see global database dot query query locator and the start start method and inside the start method we need a database dot batchable batchable context and bc this is the start method similarly global void execute void execute and it has a database dot batchable context bc comma list of s object list of s object scope global void finish database dot can you switch off camera, Archana? Database dot batchable context DC. So this is the only one parameter is expected for the finish. Now I have implemented the start method, batchable, uh, execute method, and finish method. But still it is expecting the execute method. Still schedulable is expecting the schedulable so we need to have a four methods if you are combining the schedule and batchable both together then you need to have a four methods which is a expected by the interface void execute schedulable sc let's keep this and Now, in the query, we have to write a query. Let's assume that we are going to get the records. Schedulable context. Now, here, query is string query equal to select. Select ID comma lead source. I just need a lead source. And from from lead where the lead source is not equal to null. Let's take a limit by and let's take the equal to null. I'm going to take only the five records. Perfect. And return database dot query get query locator. Database dot get query locator and you need to pass the query. Now, this is the start method. Now, in the start method, instead of writing these lines in two lines, what you can do is you can combine these two lines. Instead of writing query, declaring the query and passing it, what you can do is you can pass directly the query here. You can pass directly the query. 
right? Or else if you want to declare it first and then go for it, then you can go for it. Either one is fine. And then we have a execute method. Inside the execute method, I'll write a business logic. Now, whatever we are getting a scope, let's convert this into the lead list of lead object. List of lead. Lead list equal to list of lead. And then we'll have a scope. If lead list not empty, lead list not empty, that means is empty, not is empty, then I wanted to look through that for, let's take a lead, L colon lead list. I'm in the seventh line, you are taking two lines in a single line, right? Seventh line. What do you mean by two lines in single line? You assign the S object as a list of lead, right? Yes. So here I'm getting the S object because database.query locator returns the S object. And whenever I get a S object, I'm converting that S object into the list of leads. Okay. Man, yeah, generally okay. that uh, list will be in a for loop right yes so first i need to convert that then i need to look through that okay. like but uh previously we have done that uh conversion thing in for loop i guess no the reason we have done it is i have written here directly list of that like this query we have written and the start method return type is list of position. When the start method return type is list of particular object, you need not to do anything of the conversion. If your return type is a database.query locator, then you need to convert this. Clear? Okay. So we have a lead source equal to, let's see whether it is going to update it or not, dream ports. Now I'll directly update this lead. Or else I can declare it outside. List of lead, update list equal to new list of lead now whatever we are adding it after that i'm pushing everything into the list so once it is pushed to the update list finally i'll update that if update list dot size is greater than zero, then go for update. I'm simply doing the database.update. Now I'll give here update list. Now here, what will happen if I give a true? All operation will be there. If I give a false? Partial update will be happening. So whatever is going to update it, let it update it. What are the errors are there? Let the errors go on. Now this is the schedulable batch. Now if I execute this batch, it will, what will happen now in order to execute this batch, I need to execute it from the schedulable. That means I need to execute the batch from the execute method. Previously, how we have written, we have implemented a batch class and this batch class we called here. We invoke the batch class here. Now what I'm doing is I'm combining the both batch class and schedulable both into one class. Now where should I need to write this? You need to write it into the execute of the schedulable context. You need to write it into the execute of the 
schedulable context. So here we need to call database dot execute batch and let's call this what is the name of this now new schedulable batch that's it the way we have implemented you should implement the batch class that is as it is only the changes Instead of you dividing and writing the logic into two classes, I'm combining those two classes into single class and I'm passing the, I'm executing the batch from the schedulable execute method. Now, how can I schedule it? This is a schedulable batch. Let's go to the Apex class. Let's go to the Apex class. Now in the Apex class, we have a button called schedule. So schedule Apex. So if you click on a schedule Apex, let's say that lead, lead source update, Apex class is schedulable batch. So I have a schedulable batch. And let's say that I'm going to run on Friday, Thursday, Tuesday, or else Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Three days in a week, I'm going to run it. And start date is this one, and end date is this one. Now, time we have a 1 a.m. 1 a.m. So let's schedule it as a 1 a.m., or let's go for 3 a.m. If I click on save, it will be scheduled. Where can I see scheduled batch? We have to go to the schedule, schedule jobs. Here I can see that lead source update is scheduled on 4.14. Next one is 3 a.m. That is the time it is going to start. How did we schedule it? Through the scheduled Apex, through the UI, through the UI. Now, if you look at this through the UI, I have a, um, let me go to the Apex class. Okay, not the Apex job, Apex classes. So click on a schedule Apex. Now here, if you observe, I have a weekly, monthly, are there okay if i specify monthly it is going to give the information if it is a weekly these are the one which are going to give me now start date end date it has now if you want if you want to increase it you can increase the year also which is possible but if you look at the time it has a 12 am 1 am 2 am 3 am 4 am but assume that the requirement says that we need to schedule at 3.30 a.m. We need to schedule the batch job. We need to schedule the batch job at 3.30 a.m. Now, how can I schedule at 3.30 a.m. through the UI? So if I click on this, if I click on this, it doesn't give me the 3.30 here. After 3 a.m., it just has a 4 a.m. Right, it does not even give me the minutes 3:30, 3:20, 3:10. 3 it does not give me. Now, how can I schedule a batch class when we have this kind of a scenario? Whenever we have it, this kind of a scenario, there is a, another way to schedule it, which is called as a cron expression. Which is called as a cron expression. So, cron expression is basically Let's take a use case. So the use case is schedule the batch daily four times. That means every day four times it has to be executed my batch class. Batch class needs to be executed at 2.15 a.m. It should be executed at 4.15 a.m. It should be executed at 6.15 a.m. It should be executed at 8.15 a.m. That means every two hours, every two hours starting from two o'clock, Every two hours, my batch has to be executed. This is not possible. That means what we are doing here, recursive execution of the batch. 
executing at 2 o'clock, executing 4.15, executing 6.15, executing at 8.15. So totally in a day, I'm running it for the four times, which is not possible through the chronic, which is not possible through the UI. So you cannot schedule it here four times executing it in a day, which is not possible. Either you have to do manually. You have to do it manually. So manually go and execute the batch from the anonymous window. So every two hours, you have to log in the org and open the anonymous window. From there, you need to execute the batch. Instead of doing that, there is an alternate solution is cron expression. Let's understand what is it. So cron expression is like we will be giving the string cron expression equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, kind of this will be there. Now, what are this? Now, we have these. What are these? 0, 0, 0, 0, start, start, start. Sometimes you will see here question mark also. Whenever you search in the Google, the cron expression, they will always give 0, 0, 0, 0 question mark. Sometimes the last one will not be there. Sometimes the last one will not be there. Now, let's understand what are those. Basically, these are the seven parameters. You have a seven parameters. Con expression has a seven params. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has a seven params. Seventh one is a not mandatory, but six params are mandatory. But totally, we have a seven params which we need to declare it in order to execute the cron expression. Now, what are those seven params? What are those seven params? One is a seconds, minutes, hours, day of month, month, day of week, year. Year is an optional. The last one is a year, which is a optional, which is a optional. Now, first one is a seconds, minutes, hours, and then we have a day of month, month, day of week. Day of month, month, day of week, and then we have a year. Year is a optional. Year is optional. Now, this is how we declare it, the cron expression. Whenever we are declaring the cron expression, we always think which seconds is most of the time it is zero. What are the minutes? Like if it is a 3.30 a.m., that means hours I need to give here three. Hours I need to give here three. And minutes is nothing but this is the minute. So this minute should be the 30. So 0, 33, star, 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 star. What is the star? What is this? We will say that. But we have to mention the seven parameters. Even if you have a zero, everything has to be mandatory except the last one, which is an optional year. Now, like this, string cron expression equal to seconds, minutes, hours, day of month, month, day of week, optional year. Now, once you declare this string, once you declare the string of the cron expression, you need to execute it. You need to execute it. That means you need to schedule it. You need to schedule. So we have a system dot schedule. By using this, you will be passing this cron expression here, second parameter is a cron expression. You need to pass the cron expression. And what is the class name, batch class name? What is the class name? Whether it is a schedulable class, whether it is a batch class, whatever the class name is there, that is a third parameter. Job title, it is up to you, up to the developer. What is the title that you wanted to give it for the batch? What is the title here? Whenever we are creating it, the job name is nothing but a title. What is the job name? What is the job name? So that is the job name which we have to specify in the here. This is a job name and the pass the cron expression in the second parameter. Third parameter is the class name. So these two steps are important in the real time string cron expression. You need to declare this and pass that cron expression to the system dot schedule along with the class name and specify the what should be the job name here. Now let's see a few examples. Like we have a string cron expression zero, 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 star, star, question mark, zero. Now what is the star? What is the question mark here? So basically star is nothing but a all values. Star is nothing but a 
all values. Question mark is nothing but a no values. Matlab means I don't know. Question mark means I don't know. I don't know. Star means take all the values. For example, here the fourth one is day of month. Day of month. If I give a day of month is a star. That means all the days. All the days. If this is a month. Month, if I give a star, all months. All months. So whenever I give a star, what is that means? Take all the values. Take all the values. Question mark means no values. When you say all the values, how can we know that whether it is all values or not? No, every parameter in the Cron expression has a values. That means if it is a seconds, seconds will be taken from 0 to 59. Minutes, minutes will be taken from 0 to 59. These are the values. Hours, hours is going to take from the 0 to 23. And day of month is going to take the values of 1 to 30 or star or a question mark. 1 to 31st is the day of month. That means all the days. In case if you do not know what is the day of month, then you specify the star. Uh, if you do not know, specify the question mark. If you want all the days to be happen, then you have to specify the star. Now, similarly, we have a, another one month. Month is 1 to 12. You can specify the numbers 1 to 12 or you can directly specify the Jan to December. Like if you want to schedule it for the month of August, instead of giving a number, you can give a August here. Or else, if you do not know the month, just give a question mark. If you want every month, all the month from 1 to 12 or Jan to December, use the star. Now, the next one is a day of week. Day of week. Day of week is in a week, how many days? Like a seven days. So, 1 to 7, you can specify any value. Or else, you can specify text here, which is contains only three letters. Even for the month, also three letters. Sunday till Saturday. So it has a only three letters. If you do not know the day, if you do not know the day, then you can specify the question mark. If you want all the days to be executed, then star mark. Optional year 1970 to 2099. You can specify up to 2099. Any year you can specify. What will happen after 2099 if I specify 2100? I don't know what will happen. For now, Salesforce has given the 2099. So that is the maximum we can keep. Now here, you cannot pass the both day of month and day of week. We have a day of month and day of week. Both are there. Day of month and day of week. Fourth one is a day of month. Seventh one is a... No, sixth one is a day of week. Fourth one is day of month. Sixth one is a day of week. In between we have a month. Now you cannot specify four and six parameters together because what is the fourth one? Fourth one is a day of month. Sixth, sixth one is a day of week. This is a month. This is a week. Now how can we specify? For example, let's say the example Let's say that this is the one, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, all first three are seconds, minutes, hours are 0. I'm saying here, first day of month, first day of month, right, which is a January, and I'm saying here Friday, which is a day of week. Day of week is a Friday, and day of month is the first. Month is anyway Jan. So day of month is first and day of week is Friday. That means you are saying that schedule it every year. So year is a star here. Schedule every year first Jan and on the Friday. First Jan of Friday. Assume that if first Jan is not Friday, Every year, first Jan cannot be a Friday, right? The days will be changed. Now, in case if I do not have a first Jan or on Friday, it's no, it's a, assume that it's a Monday. First Jan is Monday. Now, what will happen? This is not qualified. My job, 
will not execute it. So this is an incorrect way of declaration. If you are specifying the day of month, do not specify the week. Do not specify the week because if it is you are saying the second and if you are saying the day of week is Tuesday. Now, every month, do you feel that second day is second day is always Tuesday? It cannot be Tuesday. It could be a Monday. It could be a Wednesday. It could be anything. So this combination does not work. This combination does not work. So do not ever specify the day of month and day of week together. So in this case, first Jan is, if it is a, not a Friday, then what will happen? It is go, it will not execute it. So that means we will not see the updated records in the Salesforce, which is a problem for the client. Now let's see a few examples, like we have a 0000, 0, 0, 0 star, star, question mark, and the star. And also we have a 0, 0, 0, 0023 star question mark like this. We have a, some example. Now tell me the first one, if I schedule it by using this cron expression, what is this means 0, 0, 0, 0, when it is going to execute the job? Midnight. Sorry? Midnight? Uh, midnight every year. Midnight every day, every year. Every day, every month. Every day, every month, every year. It is a 12 a.m. every day, every year. Second one. Uh, on 23rd, every month, every year, at 12 a.m. So 23rd is a day of month. 23rd is a day of month. So 12 a.m., this is the 12 a.m. every day, 23rd of month. And the third one? 10 a.m. every day. 10 a.m. every day. Similarly, 15 is nothing but? 3, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. It's a 24 concept. And this is 3, 10 p.m. every day. How about this? 5 uh... 5, 10 p.m. every week. Hours is 5, 10 minutes. And then what is this question mark? Day of month. We don't know. Month is all the month. Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday. Every weekend, Monday Five, to Friday. 10, every week. Yes. And how about the next one? Uh, one uh, night and 12 a.m. first month every, every, day. Day. every day. January. So it is January. only for Jan month. And the next one? Uh, in 2023 uh, at 12 a.m. every day. Every day, only in 2023 month, 2023 year. So that's how we declare it. Now, let's go and schedule it in our scenario. Uh, where is it? Now we have it. This is our schedule one. Now, how can I schedule this batch class? <coughs> this batch class. 10 a.m. every day. How can you schedule it 10 a.m. every day? Zero, 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 10 star, star, star. Star, question mark, star, question what is this star? Uh, week. Day of week. What is this fourth, third one? Is hours. So let's mm. say that I'm assuming that I don't know the. Mm. Star. So now I'll do, I'll schedule it. System dot schedule. Schedulable. Now we have a three parameters. One is job title. 
and the second one is cron expression and then we have a class name we have to give these are the three details now my class name is scheduled batch now cron expression is this is a cron expression now let's keep the name here update lead resource this is my job name Upna, I guess you have to give the instance, right, of schedulable? Yes, we have to give the instance. So new schedulable batch. I'm directly giving it inside the schedulable instead of creating the separately instance. Now, what is that uh, instance? Like, why you give it? Um, so we have done some examples. Okay. Now, you see here, what is this exactly? That's an instance. Instance. It Either declare it here, pass it, or else you can directly pass here. Okay, okay. Both are same. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and execute. Okay. Now I'll tell you about this error. Now let's execute this. Let's assume that I wanted to execute this instead of scheduling it only one time. Let me schedule it for the two o'clock, two a.m. Every two hours I'm going to schedule it. And then I'm going to schedule 4 a.m. Right, 4 a.m. And then 6 a.m. And then 8 a.m. So this is a 6 and this is a 8. Six a.m. And then we have an 8 a.m. Now here, cron expression one, one, cron expression two, two, and cron expression three, three. And what I'm doing is I'm scheduling it per in a day, four times my batch has to be executed. In a day, four times my batch has to be executed. So I'm that means every day, 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 6 a.m. 8 a.m. If you wanted 250, like as per the requirement, if it is 250, give here 15. Similarly, 415, 615, 815, you can do it. Now let's go ahead and execute it. Nothing has been selected. Yes. Schedulable. System dot schedule. System dot schedule. Now let's execute this. Really? Uh, let me go to the schedule batch. Schedule jobs. The name is okay. I need to change the name. Yeah. So it is a 4 a.m. and this is a 6 a.m. and this is 8 a.m. Okay, let's execute. Now let's go back to the scheduled job. Now it is scheduled at 2 15. 
4 a.m., 6 a.m., 8 a.m. And this is the first one is a 2 a.m. one. Then we have a 4 a.m., 6 a.m., and 8 a.m. Right? Like this, you can schedule it using the cron expression. Now, once we schedule it, once we schedule the batch class, whether it is a batch class or whether it is a schedulable, whatever we have scheduled it, once it is scheduled, you cannot modify it. Like if I'm trying to change here, now let's say I'm changing it here, three, four, five. I'm changing it here, three, four, five. When I change this three, four, five and click on save, See here, it is giving me the error. Apex class has a batch or a future job pending or in progress. If you want to modify this, you need to delete the scheduled job. Once the class is scheduled, once the class is scheduled, we cannot modify anything in the class. We cannot modify anything in class. So if you want to modify it, you need to delete all the scheduled ones related to that particular class. So let's delete it. Now let's delete it. Now we will try to update. Click on save. Now it is allowing. So once we schedule it, once we schedule the class, we cannot edit. Same thing everywhere, even in the developer edition, sandbox, production, wherever you go, we cannot edit the batch class once it is scheduled. Homework. Implement schedulable batch class to update delivery installation status to in progress for all opportunity that are not closed right in the opportunity if you go to the opportunity in opportunities we have a field called We have a field called delivery installation status. In progress yet to be begin completed. In case if you do not have this field, create it. So these are the three fields in progress yet to be begin and completed. And that field needs to be changed to the in progress. For all the open opportunities, whatever the closed ones are there, we should not touch closed opportunities. Only the open opportunity, opportunity checklist value has to be updated. And schedule this at 1 a.m. of it, 28th of March. Only for 20th. In every month, 28th day, 1 a.m., it should be running the job. Clear? Any questions on that prawn expression? Uh, Swapna, yeah. now the scheduled class we can have without a batch class as well, right? We can schedule something without yes, batch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So now suppose now this the same homework. Suppose now I'm retrieving, uh, this is retrieving around uh, more than 10,000 records, okay, mm -hmm. which is hitting the gov governor limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in that case, uh, uh, the best choice is that I have to create a batch class and then schedule it, right? Yes. Okay. So is it a break? मतलब is it is it a best practice to always schedule a batch class? Because we don't know it might there might be more uh, rows. It's not a developer future. decision. It's a client will say that every day I want to execute this. That means I want to be, these records should be updated because we will be getting it every day, these records, but the status will be incorrect. We want those records to be updated. Let's assume that we are getting a leads from the Facebook. Every day we are getting the leads from the Facebook. Whenever it gets the leads from the Facebook, every day I wanted to update the lead status for those leads. So in that case, definitely we have to schedule it. 
not every batch class need not to be scheduled it but if you want to schedule it then only we will write a batch class otherwise we will not write a batch class mm -hmm. okay and one more thing here we are doing the query right the string query we are doing it now this string query is hard coded here string string is hard coded here let's assume that you have moved this class to the production you have moved this class to the production once it is moved to the production plan says that we wanted to put another condition in the where another condition we wanted to put it in the where condition so just stop the what are the batch class is scheduled just delete that and modify the query and re-execute it. Now, in that case, production, you cannot edit this query. You cannot even edit the any class in the production. Now, how can we do it? Now, for that, it is a best practice in the real time to not write the query here. Do not write the query. So, what you need to do is declare a query outside of the start method. Right? And you need to create a let me do it for this. Uh, not to touch this one. Let me use the existing one. Update account batch job. So here we have a query. So instead of this, what I'll do is I'll declare string query string query now this query sorry this query this is a just a string it's not a method i'm declaring the query outside i'm declaring the query outside and whenever we are executing this batch class whenever we are executing this batch class we should pass the query from the outside we should pass the query from outside. Now, how can I pass the, usually how we can pass it, we have to initialize it, right? Whenever we are doing it here, now let me delete this. Usually we write database dot execute batch and i can create a directly instance here now and the executing for the let's give the limit five now like this we will give now if i want to pass the query if i wanted to pass the query there so for example i wanted to pass the query because it is expecting the query here it is expecting the query so let's build the query here string q equal to Now I'm passing this where let's take it as a limit five. Now this query I wanted to pass it to the update batch. Update batch is saved. Now I'm executing it. When I execute it, it gives me error because whenever I'm passing a value to the class, whenever I'm passing a value to the class. Class does not accept the values or class does not accept the parameters because class does not have a parameters. It does not accept it. So what we have to do is we have to create a constructor. We have to create a constructor. So global, the constructor name is update account bad job. And here I'm passing the Query. So let's take it as a string Q and whatever I'm getting it from the outside, save it to the here, query equal to Q. Now click on execute, save and debug, execute it. Now this time it is going to get the information, right? It is going to update the details. Yes, yeah, so that's how we pass it from the outside. Whenever you are passing the query from outside or from different class, 
or some different place you are calling this batch class right and if you want to pass any query so what you have to do you have to use the constructor and for that constructor pass the parameter expect the parameter here and this parameter will be passed from the outside of the batch class now that's all about the asynchronous next we will move on to the triggers now so far till now whatever we were doing yet we are writing a apex class we are writing a apex class whether it is a asynchronous synchronous or a small apex class whatever i am writing it whatever we are writing it we are writing in the apex and i am executing this logic from the anonymous window I am executing this logic from the anonymous window so that there will be updates happen to the related object. Let's assume that we have an account object. If I want, I have written here logic, the business logic is update the all the account rating to the WOM. So I wanted to update that as well as the amount equal to some $10,000. So these are the data I wanted to update it to the account. So if I wanted to update that, what we will do, we will implement a logic within the method and that method is sitting inside the class. And this class we are implementing in the developer console, in the Apex class. And to execute this class, we are going into the anonymous window by using this class and the method name, like a class dot method name, we are executing the logic so that what will happen on the account object, the related record gets updated to the, the fields gets updated to the related object. The fields gets updated to the related object. All right. So that's what we used to do. Now, instead of doing it a manual, instead of doing it a manual, what we will do is there is a gate kind of a uh, what we call we use a triggers so through the trigger whenever there is a, any update is happening on the account object automatically execute my logic automatically execute my logic and update the account record update the account record so let's take a scenario the scenario is i have let's assume that i have a scenario we have an account object. Account object. On this account object, assume that I have a 500 fields. 500 fields. Out of these 500 fields, 300 fields are mandatory. 300 fields are required. In order to create an account, I need a 300 fields required. So these 300 fields, if I make it a required from the page layout, or from the field level. If I make this 300 fields mandatory from the field level or the page layout, what will happen is whenever the user is trying to create an account record, it shows in the red box, wherever the values that is not filled, everywhere, all the 300 records, it is going to show me the red color boxes and it is going to give me the certain mandatory information there. So on the account page, most of the things are shown as a red color. Right, instead of doing it from the page layout or field level, because I do not want to restrict at the field level or the page layout. So assume that the other way of implementation is we can go for a validation rule. Other way of making the field as a mandatory is validation. So using the validation rule, we can make the field man mandatory. Now 300 fields, making the mandatory from the validation rule is very difficult because validation rule has a limit saying that per object, per object, it can have maximum active validation rules, active validation rules, right? So, which is not possible. Field level, we do not want. Page level, page layout level, we do not want. And the validation rule also, it does not supported by the Salesforce. So, we cannot go for it. Now, what is the other way that I can make the 300 fields are mandatory? 
and which out of these 300 fields, if I can fill as a developer, which I can automate few of the fields based on the input from other 200 fields, I can take the 200 fields input and I can update the few details based on that so that user need not to be entered the 300 fields, additional 300 fields, I can make them auto-populated, right? And what are the out of, like for example, 200 fields, I'm auto-populating it. 100 fields, we can make it as a mandatory through the trigger. So that is the one scenario where we will use the trigger, where we will use the trigger. And another scenario is, assume that I have a position object and I have a candidate object. This is a position object. And this is candidate object. Now the relation between these two objects are, if the relation is between these two objects are, if it is a master detail relationship, assume that it is a master detail relationship. If it is a master detail relationship, I will have a field called on the parent, which called roll up summary, which called roll up summary field, which is going to calculate, automatically calculate the child records count. Assume that it is not a master detail relationship. It is a lookup relationship. If it is a lookup relationship, how can I implement a roll up summary field? One of the way is through the trigger. One of the way is through the trigger. Through the trigger, I can implement roll up summary field and I can update the whenever it is happening. Right, so trigger is nothing but what we are doing here. Trigger is nothing but I am writing a custom business logic. Custom business logic that gets executed automatically based on the operation that is done by the user. It's a custom business logic which will execute this logic automatically based on the events, based on the events, whatever the events are happening on the object level, whatever the user is creating it, insert, save, update, delete, whatever they are doing it, right? So everything based on the event, this custom business logic is automatically executed, is called trigger. And we use trigger for the complex scenarios, for the complex scenarios, like you have a 300 fields, that is a very like handling everything in the configuration, all 300 fields is a bit difficult. So that what we can do, few of them, we can automate it. Or else if you want to write a complex validations, few normal validation, very easy one, you can implement it here. Assume that you have a very complex validations. You have to check the parent record fields as well as the child record fields. And based on that, you need to verify other fields. Like we have a so much complication on the validation where you need to check multiple details. In that case, we will go with the trigger. Or else, if you wanted to build a complex flow, if you have a scenario which is a very complex flow, we will see that example. But whenever we have a complex flow, which you think only trigger is the best way for me to implement that kind of a requirement, we will go with the trigger. There are other options like a lightning flows. If you think it is a better to go with the lightning flows, you can go with that. It is up to the developer because they know the requirement, how complexity is the requirement. They know it and how best the developer can deliver the project. It's up to the developer. And also deduplication process. The duplication process like if i have an account record already there okay with the first name last name email id billing address and a few more pick list values these are the common requirement for the in order to identify the deduplication that means matching criteria matching criteria is nothing but so check lead level i have a first name last name email and also check the status and from where we are receiving the lead. So that is a lead source. And also check the phone number. These are the different conditions which we need to cross verify. If I see that these all are matching with the existing one, then what we can do is we can avoid the deduplication. 
So that process can be implemented in, within the trigger. So basically trigger will be executed in all the DML operation. Could be an insert, could be an update, could be a delete, could be an undelete, could be an absurd, could be a merge, right? Anything that I'm doing it, anything the user is performing the event, for all of them, it gets executed. For all of them, it gets executed. Sopna? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, in flows, uh, we cannot uh, implement the validation, right? Uh, a pre-validation, correct? Uh, so if there is a pre-validation, then we have to go for triggers, correct? Is it Why so? Why can't we implement pre-validation in the flow? Pre-validation meaning uh, like, um, okay, if the account number is not null or something like that, uh, it should not be null, such type of validation. We have a conditions, right, in the lightning flow? Whenever you are creating the record trigger flow, it yeah. asks whenever we have an object, we can do it. So lightning flow supports all the DMLs. Okay. And what about deduplication? Deduplication also can be handled through the lightning flow. Okay. Now the situation is whatever we are doing in the trigger can be done in the lightning flow. But way back, way back, lightning flow was not capable. So trigger was initiated long back and everybody started using the trigger. Lightning flows for now, what are the current situation is there? Current situation can be handled most of the scenarios in the lightning flow. But before it was not like that. So triggers are custom OPEX code, which will execute the business logic automatically based on the certain events. And by using the triggers, we can implement the complex business logic, complex validation, deduplication, or a process and the complex. Now, another way is like a whenever you are creating a record from the lightning, assume that you have implemented a LWC component, which is a user interface, which is a user interface. And this user interface, whenever the record is saved, Whenever the record is saved, if you want to calculate the amount or if you want to calculate the different situations, right? There are scenarios, right? For example, whenever the lead is created, I wanted to send an email and annual revenue and the phone field, everything should be updated, right? So email should be sent and I need to update the annual revenue. I need to update the phone value, not only with this record, also the all the child record should be updated. And similarly, at the same time, whenever the lead is inserted, we have to copy the lead record into the custom object. Okay, this all should be happen in the single transaction. And one more thing, when we have, okay, there is another way which, which we can think on. So let's assume that we know account and contact relationship, right? Account and contact relationship is lookup relationship. But if I delete an account, what will happen? If I delete an account, what will happen to the related contact? It's deleted. It is deleted. That is the additional feature is given by the sales force. Now, I do not want to delete the contact records. I do not want to create the contact records so that we can handle it through the trigger. I have not tried in the flow. So right now, current, current situation, maybe flow can also do that. But this was in case if I if I'm deleting the account, if I wanted to keep the contact details and link the contact details with a different account. So before deleting the account, I wanted to check whether this account has a related contacts or not. If there are a related contacts, then first link those related contacts to the different account, then you delete the account. Right? So condition there are so many conditions which are we have to check here 
So that can also do it through the trigger. And the next one is, like as I have mentioned, all the DML operations. Trigger can be fired on the both after and before. It can be fired on before as well as the after. And each trigger should be associated with the object. That means every object, if you are creating the trigger, if you are creating the trigger, whenever you are creating the trigger, the trigger will be associated with the object. Associated with the object. That means every object can have a one trigger or a multiple triggers. Every object has one trigger or a multiple triggers. But as per the best practices, it is always best practices is create only one trigger. Every object should be having a one trigger. If you have a more than that, modify it because it will be difficult going further. Now, let's see the trigger syntax. So we will be writing this. The trigger class is always starting with the trigger. There is no access modifier here. There is no access modifier for the trigger. You will be directly starting the same trigger. Trigger, whatever the name of the Apex class is there, that is the name of the class on which object you are writing the trigger. If you are writing the trigger on the account object, it should be account. If you are writing the trigger on contact object, it should be the contact. If you are writing the trigger on opportunity, it should be opportunity. And event. Here we need to must have a parameter called event. So trigger has a expected parameter here called trigger events. Trigger events is nothing but when to fire when to fire the specific logic. Now within this, we will be writing the business logic. Now there is a standard ways instead of writing the business logic directly into the trigger. So we have a something called the concept in the real time is trigger, trigger handler, trigger helper. This is the concept. Now here, trigger is a one class, trigger handler is another class, trigger helper is another class. That means trigger is calling the trigger handler, trigger handler is calling the trigger helper. Now where is the business logic? Business logic sits into the trigger helper. We don't write a business logic directly into the trigger. We don't write directly into the trigger. Right now, for time being, I'm saying here, write a business logic, but usually in the real time, we do not write a business logic inside the trigger. Inside the trigger, I'll just call the trigger handler based on the event. And this trigger hand handler calls the trigger helper and the business logic sits into the trigger helper. Now let's say example, trigger, accounts trigger. So this is my class name on the account object. I'm writing it on the account object trigger events. Now we'll see what is the trigger events that we have to pass it here, but let's understand the structure. So if you are writing a trigger on the case, it has to be trigger case name. What are the class name is that case trigger on which object you are writing it. Similarly, if you are writing the trigger on the position object, it should start with the trigger and the class name on the position and then pass the events here and then you have to write the logic. Now we'll see what are the trigger events. What are the trigger events? Now till this point how to start and write the class is everybody clear on this? Because in the re in, in interview, at least you will get at least one question. Maximum, you might get five questions. At least you will get one question from the trigger. Now, trigger events. Trigger events are nothing but when the trigger should be fired. When should I fire the trigger? 
Do I need to fire, fire the trigger now or after or before or when? Before inserting, before update, when should I need to fire the trigger? So it is going to be decided by the events, right? It, it is going to be decided by the events. There is a possibility that multiple events can also fire. Multiple events also can fire at a time. So Apex is provided the seven trigger events. This is also the interview question. They will ask, what are the different trigger events we have? So the trigger events are before insert, before update, before delete, after insert, after update, after delete, after undelete. This is the additional one on the after. Rest all are insert, update, delete, insert, update, delete. We have a before and after. For the undelete, there is no before. Only after is there, after undelete. So we have a seven trigger events. Seven trigger events are there. Now let's understand each one of them one by one. So before insert is nothing but, before insert is nothing but, this is going to fire, this is going to fire before inserting a new record. Just a second. Okay. So before insert is basically it is going to fire before inserting the record. For example, I'm inserting a record. I'm inserting a record. So let's go ahead and see. Now let me open account. So for example, I'm inserting a account record. Right, that means I'm creating a new record. Whenever I create a new record, Whenever I create a new record, for example, I'm inserting the details here. I'm inserting the details. Like this is an insert account, let's say ACC1. And as soon as I click on a save button, as soon as I click on a save button, the first thing it is going to check is before inserting, before even commenting this, uh, before it is committed to the database before it is committed to the database, what are the criteria that I need to check? What are the criteria that I need to check? So it is going to first verify the before insert and few examples are like custom validations, like before inserting it, before inserting the record inside the database, check few scenarios like did the user has entered the industry did the user has entered the employee which are custom validation so if i have to tell in the real time scenario so let's assume that we have a shopping mall complex okay we have a we have a shopping mall complex in the shopping mall complex, you have a very small, small stores are available, right? So there are so many uh, shops will be available within the shopping mall. Now, in the shopping mall, we have a entry as well as we have a exit. We have a entry as well as the exit. So this is the entry and this is the exit. So this is the entry. And this is exit. Entry and exit is there. Now, whenever we are entering into the shopping mall or could be a in the shopping, 
or in, in, in could be a store could be a shopping mall could be a uh, gold shop anything that they have a entry and exit might be the same entry might be the different exit assume that they have a different exit here now whenever we are entering into the shopping mall what will happen let's take a forum mall right in hyderabad forum mall so many malls are there so whenever we enter into the mall the first thing what they will do is there is a security starting of the mall itself there is a security two members will be there here two security members will be there there will be a two security members now these security members work is to check whoever is entering to, entering into the shopping mall they need to cross verify they need to cross verify what are the stuffs they are bringing it right or whether is is everything proper or not we need to check their bags let's assume that there are a five custom five uh, users who are about to enter into the shopping mall now they are about to enter so whenever they are about to enter inside the shopping mall the first thing is the security person says that you will have a kind of a cabin there should be a kind of a cabin which uh, which will be like a curtain right so here the cabin will be there so the person if they are entering the person person is entering whenever the person is entering the person has to go in this cabin cross check then he has to go inside it if everything is fine go inside it what is happening before entering into the shopping mall they are checking the each person they are checking the each person whether they are okay to enter into the shopping mall or not right and while exit while exit also the security members will be there but it is fine if you have a four customers or if you have a four users five users if you have very less users are there it is okay that you can you can cross check each member there you can cross check the each member but assume that during the festival time during the festival time so many users are coming into the shopping mall so many users are coming into the shopping mall that time it is so difficult for the security member to cross check each and every member each and every member it is so difficult to check so that's the reason what they have done is they have added here kind of a security alert will be there on top here during the entry there will be a security alert as well as here also exit security alert will be there that means though the security person is missed it still it can be verified by the that alert now let's take same scenario let's take the same scenario as a concept for the sales force now here whatever this mall is there shopping mall right this shopping mall is a assume that object it is a object shopping mall is object what is the object here shopping mall shopping mall is the object shopping mall is the object now within the shopping mall object we have a different records the records are already exist here records 1 record 2 record 3 like this so many records are there that is records now whatever the security persons are there here the security persons are there now these are the whatever the users are there these are records these are records now whenever the user is entering the creating the records and as soon as they click on a save what will happen these records directly it will it will not go to the directly to the object we should not allow them to the directly to the object level before pushing the records to the object level we need to cross the trigger trigger is the security alert inside the trigger what we have written we have written a business logic business 
logic. Inside the trigger, we have written the business logic. So this box is the business logic because whenever the new record is created, the record has to go to the business logic. If it is check whether it is properly fine or not, then enter into inside the object. Now, who is allowing inside the object here? That is the security guards, whatever you see here, the, they are the triggers. They are the triggers. Now, this triggers has a concept within this box. They can verify all the logic and if everything is fine, they can allow them inside it. They can allow them inside it. Now, same concept with the trigger. Trigger is nothing but whenever you are creating a record, okay, or whenever you are exit is nothing but a deleting a record. Whenever you are deleting a record, whatever action you do it, it has to go through the triggers. If you are implement that, that is the concept behind the trigger. If you are implementing a trigger, and that trigger is if you are specifying the events, if it is an insert or if it is a delete, whether it is entry or whether it is a exit, you decide an event. No, it is only for entry I wanted to write the trigger. Exit, I do not want to implement a trigger. So you can remove the security members from the exit. We do not need it here. Only en entry point we can implement it. So whenever we have a trigger, the user or the person has to go through this logic. If everything is fine, then only they will get inserted in, inside the inserted or updated inside the object. Inside the object. Now, during this process, during this process, now in terms of Salesforce, during this process, it can happen before insert before update, all the seven things, before update, before delete, after insert, after update, after delete, after undelete. These are the different events which are going to tell the trigger whether it is a creating a record, whether it is updating a record, whether it is a deleting a record, whether it is an undelete a record, based on these events, trigger is going to perform the logic. Now let's go back. Now here, the before insert, the this before insert will be fired whenever we are inserting the record before it is getting into the database we are going to qualify the logic we are going to qualify the logic now what are the scenarios that we can implement in the before insert what are the scenarios that we can implement the before insert this is the interview question they will ask give me one example that you have implemented the trigger for the before insert what is the scenario that you have implemented? So it could be possible that before insert can be implemented on cross verifying the validation, uh, custom validation, basically cross verifying the values or updating the like account values or like you have a account amount count is there, which is automatically updated based on your child records. So those count will be automatically updated as well as duplication deduplication so deduplication that means same records again inserting can be avoided using the before insert also sometimes we need to check the permission at the object level as well as the field level that can also possible through the before insert now for the before insert where do i specify trigger account trigger on account before insert before insert Whenever you say here before insert event, that means this trigger is going to work only for the before insert. Only for the before insert. Now, similarly, we have a before update. Before update. Before update is nothing but. Before update is nothing but. We have a data 
the record is there inside the object the record is there inside the object i'm modifying the changes like i'm opening the existing record when i open the existing record and if i try to edit this if i try to edit now whenever i'm editing it for example i'm updating the type whenever i click on here save on the edit window that's how the before update is going to execute it before it is saving into the database now what could be the scenarios for the before update what could be the scenarios for the before update anyone what could be the scenarios for the before update uh, same as before insert like validation custom validations we have to cross verify and if are updating any field updating a field on the same object on the same object based on the child records like if you are updating this record okay and if you have any parent record to this if you have a, any parent record to this and by updating the child record your parent record needs to be updated in case if you have those kind of a scenarios before saving the data into the database right so in case if you have a description needs to be updated so kind of a roll up summary for look up you mean Something roll up summary is once the data is inserted into the database, then we will do the roll up summary. Okay. But here we have a before update. So before update kind of a, like a description. So which is not mandatory for the client, but maybe it is mandatory for the later point of time. Kind of a description update or some small status needs to be updated. Like if there are no child records, if I'm deleting the child record, right? So the status of the account should be changed back to the no accounts, no contacts. So those kind of a things we can do it in the delete is again before delete. So, but before update is very rare scenario field update on the parent record, which is not necessary, very important fields. And also if you want to check any object level security or a field level security, if you wanted to do, you can do it through the before update. Right, deduplication, record level permission, object level permission, field level permission. Why we do not have a record level permission on the before insert? Because record is not yet created inside the database. But before update level, we have to check whether I have a access to the record level or not. We have to check whether the access is there or not. Now, where I'm going to put the before update, before update, I'll be specifying here. So trigger account name, account trigger on the account object and inside the bracket, I'll be specifying the before update. Similarly, we have a before delete. Now before delete, is whenever I'm deleting it. For example, I'm deleting this record. So whenever I'm deleting this record, before it is committed to the database, what are the things can be happen before deleting it? Example, any scenarios for the before delete? Any scenarios for the before delete? Any linked records per account contact opportunities? So here, alert, before deleting it, we will not give any alert message, Akash. Usually alert messages, SMS, emails, these all notifications, we will send it only once we commit to the database. Now in this case, before delete, as I have mentioned previously, account and contact, I have a relationship here, right? This is a lookup relationship. So whenever this is a lookup relationship, if I'm deleting the account, as per the Salesforce standard, contacts also getting deleted, right? So 
whenever I'm doing a delete operation here, before deleting it, I need to update the related contacts to the different account, different account. So that is the one of the scenario where we use the before delete. That is the one of the scenario before delete. So before delete will be business logic verification, record level permissions, object level permission, and to remove the related chain records in the lookup relationship to prevent the deletion of the chain records. So the example is account and contact, which I have given. Now before delete, I'll be specifying it inside this, which is a trigger, account trigger on the account. Now that's all with the before. Now the next one, which we are going to go for a after insert. Now after insert is nothing but, now whenever I create a record, whenever I create a new record, now I clicked on the save button. As soon as I clicked on the save button, it goes to the database.com and it is committed the data inside the database. Once it is committed the data inside the database back, it will send the response saying that I have committed. Whenever I receive the response, that's how the trigger is going to listen the response. Okay, it is data is inserted perfectly fine. Now, do I need to do any other logic after inserting the record inside the database.com? So that's how the after insert is going to be executed. Now, any scenarios for the after insert? Yeah, sending email or creating task. All the notifications and sending an email, task. Updating related uh, objects. Related object, updating the roll-up summary. Yeah. Right? So these all comes into the after insert. So sending a notification, share the record to the users. Right? You can share the records to the users also after insert. So assume that sharing the record is nothing but usually what we have learned so far is I can share the record by going to the specific record here and I can click on a sharing button here and I can share the record to the another user. This is one way. Another way is another way is sharing settings. Now, if you go to the sharing settings, usually we will give a condition in the sharing settings similar to this. Now, you will specify if account rating is equal to hot or a warm and industry equal to finance and active equal to yes, if it is a active and the customer priority is high type equal to prospect. If you have this kind of a if, if user is creating the account, new account, and if it is qualifying this criteria, then we are sharing the record to the group of people. Now let's assume that the client came back that we have a different way of sharing it. What is the different way? They will say that whenever the in industry equal to finance, share with one group. There is a finance group is there, share with, one group and industry equal to banking share with another group share with another group and also if it is an industry equal to some different agriculture share with different group now this has to be decided during the creation of the record also along with this along with this we need to specify the the, the level of access, we need to specify the level of access. If the user is, the user can be linked to the different profiles. User can be linked to the different profiles. If the user is connected, user is linked to profile one, they should get only private access or read only access. If the user is connected to the pri pri profile two, then he should get the access of read write. If the person is, if the person is parent three, if the person is parent, the uh, user is connected to the profile three, then he should get read only and read write. And this kind of a, this kind of a sharing, I wanted to implement during the creation of it. 
during the creation of the record. We should not be keeping that this kind of a different logic. If I have to implement this, I need to implement lot many sharing settings here. Lot many sharing settings, I need to implement it. Right. So these are the during the creation of record, we wanted to implement the sharing setting based on the user profile and user permission set and user role. We need to give what kind of a permissions and what is the industry, what is the rating and whether that person is already part of any other group. All these things we have to check it. If the person is not part of the group, then only share this record to the that person. So these kind of a complex logics we can implement. This cannot be possible through the lightning flows. Yeah. Yeah. And is it possible to implement approval process also through after after insert or after update like that? We yes. can call we can call approval process. Calling the approval process yesterday we have discussed whether I can call the approval call the apex. You remember? Yeah. Differences mm. we have seen. So calling the apex uh, does uh, approval process has it? No. It does not have. So approval mm. process cannot call. We cannot call the approval process. Any so because approval process will be executed. We have a condition that we are specifying there. Oh. Right. No, because through the flow we can call the approval process, right? So through the trigger we cannot call. Through the flow, how you are calling the approval process? Yeah, there is a method to call the approval process. There I is just, a method. Yeah. What is that method? Uh, uh, something I, I just implemented that scenario is because I was uh, doing the super badge. So I, I did that scenario. That method is you are writing the custom logic. But mm. what I'm saying is you cannot call the approval process. The mm. one which you have implemented the approval process that you cannot call. You have to write it. The logic, custom logic has to be implemented. Hmm. Okay. So after insert, we are specifying here in the trigger event. And the trigger is always starts with the trigger. Account trigger on the account object. Now the next one is a after update. After update is whenever I am editing the record. If I am editing the record, I'm updating it once, once I click on a save button, it is going to the database.com and it is updating the record here. Once it is update is done, this is going to send the response back. When it is sending the response back to the UIE, in between I have a business logic. So I have a business logic. So this business logic is the trigger. Trigger is going to listen to that response from the database, whenever it re receives the response from the database, it go through the all the logic that needs to be executed. Once it is executed, then it will pass the data, it will pass the response back to the UI. So now UI can see the response here. Now, what could be the after update scenarios? Notifications. Yeah, same as after notifications. Yes. Activities, uh, updating related objects. Updating related object, roll up summary field, notifications, sharing mechanism, and assignment. Assignment to be okay. So which are the objects we can implement the assignment? Case, uh, lead. lead. Case and lead. But if we have a another objects can we implement the assignment we cannot implement the assignment for the other object so if you want to implement an assignment for the other object we can do it in the trigger through the after update now here event i'm passing the after update and the trigger class name on the account object now the next one we have a after delete. After delete. So once I have deleted the record, once I have deleted the record, after delete, once it is deleted, that means committed to the database and database is sending the response back to the trigger. Now trigger has to do the logic. Once it is deleted, 
based on the deletion, what are the logic needs to be executed? Then it will go to the UI. So after delete is going to come into the place when the database sends the response back to the trigger. Now, what are the scenarios that can be happen on the after update? Uh -huh. Sorry, after delete. What uh -huh. are the scenarios that can happen on the after delete? So same sending notification, updating the related records, then maybe deleting uh, the records permanently from the recycle bin, all those things. Yeah. So roll up summary field, updating it. Because once we delete it, the child record is deleted. So initially I have a, for example, account has, account has a three, three child record, which is a contact one, contact two, contact three. So in the account, I have a roll up summary, which says that, roll up summary, which says that three, count is three. Now I'm deleting the child three, contact three. So whenever I delete it, once it is deleted and it is committed to the database and database send the response back to the trigger. As soon as I see that we are receiving the response, immediately the roll up summary gets updated to the two. Immediately the roll up summary is gets updated to the two. So the count will be always should be equal to the what are the child records we have. So roll up summary field, which will be implemented in the after delete. And how about after and delete? After undelete means once I deleted the record and if I'm undeleting the record, if I'm undeleted the record, once undeleted the record, that means all I, I received here one record, which is undeleted one, the one which is in the recycle bin, I restored it and I could see the record here. That means undelete is completed. Once the undelete commit is completed, then after undelete, the logic is going to execute. So what are the scenarios that can happen on the after undelete? Roll up summary update. Roll up summary update. Because once we undelete, it has to be updated the count back. Similarly, it could be updated the formula fields. So sometimes what happens is account has a opportunities, right? So opportunity, if you are creating the formula field, if it is a formula field, this formula field uh, is basically, let's assume that sum of opportunity amount. Now, if I, if I undelete one of the opportunity, my formula field should be reset back. So those all logic can be, formula field anyway, it will be get updated automatically. So undelete is sending the email alert, updating the role of summary, firing the sharing role. Because once I undelete it, all the sharing rules should be applied to that particular record, right? Also the assignment also. And here I'm specifying the after undelete. So trigger, account trigger on the account. So these are the seven trigger events. These are the seven trigger events. We have another concept, okay? Now before going to that concept, Trigger is all the trigger information resides inside the Apex trigger object. If you wanted to know what are the trigger that I have implemented, what are the trigger that I have implemented, you can go here, search here Apex triggers, and you can see all the trigger classes you can see here. And if you wanted to know through the, through the query, that means you wanted to run the query. If you want to run the query, we have a object called Apex trigger. If you run the object Apex trigger, Apex trigger. So we have a object called Apex trigger. Now if we execute it, this one, let's say query and let's execute it. Now, right now I do not have any records. That's the reason it is not showing. So this is the object from this. You can know that what are the triggers that are exist inside the organization. So through that, you can know that. And always uh, the Apex triggers, if you want to create a Apex trigger, 
So go to the file, click on a new, click on a Apex trigger. We have a don't go to the Apex class. We have to go to the Apex trigger. So whenever we are creating the Apex trigger, it has a two fields here, two input fields. One is a name of the trigger. Let's say that I'm creating some dummy trigger here. Dummy trigger. And let's assume that I'm creating on the account. So whatever the trigger name is there, let's give it as a ACC trigger. ACC trigger and the S object is account. Now as soon as I click on a submit, the triggers always store in the, always save it as an extension called .apxt. Whereas classes will be .apxc. And here the last one is a T. So whenever you see that extension is .apxt, then that means it is a trigger. Then that means trigger. Now let's assume that I have a scenario. Yeah. Uh, can we write triggers on uh, non-standard objects? I mean, uh, set up objects also? User object. Set up object means example, user object. Yeah, user object or group object, something like that. Such things are happen in real time. Group object, we don't write it. Group member object, we don't write it. Query or whatever the queues, no, we do not write it. Only if you want a trigger on the user level, that is also very rare scenarios, you will do it. But usually we do not create any trigger on those. Okay. Now let's assume that I have a scenario that Scenario says that I, so right now we have understood all these events. Now I know that before insert is uh, fired before inserting the record, before update is fired before updating. Like this, I know all of this. Now, for example, I need a logic that needs to be implemented on the after insert, before insert, after update, after delete, after undelete. Sorry, after, before insert, after insert, after update, after delete. So these three events, whatever we have, that means on the multiple events, I wanted to fire a trigger. Multiple events, I wanted to fire a trigger. That means whenever I'm implementing a trigger, I need to write a logic to execute, the trigger should be executed for the before insert, the trigger should be executed for the after insert, the trigger should be executed for the same trigger. I'm not writing the different trigger. So same trigger should be executed for the after update, same trigger should be executed for the after delete. Now, when we have a multi multiple trigger events, now how can we do in the single trigger, whether it is possible or not? whether it is possible or not, how to fire a trigger on the multiple events. That means you are passing the event here, before insert, after insert, after update, after delete. Four events you are passing it. For the four events, you wanted to execute the business logic or the validation code for these all four. So how can we handle this? because the scenarios will be different compared to before insert, after insert, after update, after delete, right? After delete, I don't want to check the sharing rule, right? I do not want to check the object permission. I do not want to check the record level, right? So these all need not to be happen on the deleted after delete. So those scenarios will not work. Now, how can I implement all the four events if I have a multiple events here? How can we implement it? How can we implement it? So let's take an example. Now let's assume that we have a, um, let's assume we have a lead object. We have a lead object, which is a parent. And I have a child object. Assume that this child object is some prospects are there, okay? Prospects is the child object. 
Now, between these two, the relationship is lookup relationship. Between these two, the relationship is the lookup relationship. Lookup relationship. Let's say that we got a requirement. We got a, in the re real time, we have called as a uh, sprints. Okay, we call it as a sprint. Inside the sprint, what are we going to implement? They will give all the tickets. For example, sprint is for two weeks. Okay, within these two weeks, I need to implement a three stories. I need to implement a three stories. Three stories is nothing but uh, three requirements. Three requirements, I need to implement it. Three requirements I need to implement. Let's assume that I received a, first I opened the requirement one. First I opened the requirement one. So requirement one says that while creating lead, while creating the lead record, we wanted to make few fields as a mandatory. Okay. Um, while creating the lead record, make sure to enter the email and annual revenue, annual revenue and the phone number and the phone number these fields are mandated. These fields are required. This is the first requirement. And the second requirement is, second requirement is, once the lead is inserted successfully, once the lead record inserted, successfully there are no errors so successfully then copy the lead record data copy the lead record data into the child object child object is prospects into child object this is the requirement two now i have seen the requirement three Requirement three is so once the data is copied to the prospects, once the once the data is successfully copied to the prospect object. That means the data is saved into the database. Once it is done, send email, the notification, send notifications, email alert to the lead owner, to the lead owner. These three requirements client has given that we have to implement in the sprint, current sprint. Now, when I reviewed these three requirements, now, as a developer, as a developer, what I'll do is, now here, the first thing is that while creating the lead record, make sure the email annual phone is needed. That means what I'll do, I'll create a trigger for this, for, for the first record, first requirement, trigger, Lead trigger so lead trigger and on lead. So first one I need I need to cross check before committing to the uh, database. I need to cross check. So it should be before insert. That is for the first requirement. This is my thought process as a developer. And the second requirement, trigger, 
lead trigger one. I'll be creating another one on the lead because here it says that after inserting the lead record successfully into the database, I need to copy. So here my event is after insert. Right, then I'll implement the logic. When I'm doing the requirement three, again, I'll implement another trigger, lead trigger two on lead. Because all three requirements are divided. So as per the requirement, we will go on implementing the triggers. And the second one is once it is done, right. So once it is done, that is also after insert. That is also after insert. But here what I'm doing it, I'm sending the email. Email alert, we are sending it. On top, we are doing the business logic. Now, so we can say that I received a first requirements. That's the reason I have implemented the first trigger and I have received the second requirement. So I have implemented the second trigger. I have received the third requirement. So I have received the third trigger. So as I have received the trigger, I'm doing the work here. That's not, not, that's not it. But as a developer, you can say this, but it's not a right way to say. As a developer, as a best practices in the Salesforce, you should not be creating the, for each requirement, you should not be creating the different, different triggers. No, don't create this. Don't create the second trigger for the second requirement, third trigger is for the third requirement. Don't do that. We should never do that because it's not expected. This is not a best practices. Instead of this, all of this, so what you need to do is better you write, okay, first time you came here, so you are implementing the trigger. So you are implementing a trigger. So when you are implementing a trigger, so lead trigger on lead, and here, the first time you are writing the before insert, First time you are writing the before insert and within this you are writing a some business logic. Write a write business logic for before insert. Now Next time you visited the second requirement. Second requirement says that after insert, right? After insert. Now, within this only, write the business logic for the after insert, right? Business logic for after insert. And if you have a before update, similarly, you have it after insert, there is a something called before update. Assume that you have another one before update. Write the logic here only for the before update. Only write the logic here for the before update. Now, you will decide it, this logic when to execute, this logic when to execute, this logic when to execute it. That means you will be telling the system now, this first one is execute only on the before insert. You will be telling the system, this logic insert only for the before update. Execute this only for after insert. Now, this way, everything we are going to cover the logic for only single trigger. Only single trigger. Now, how can you specify this logic has to be executed for the business before insert, and this logic has to be executed before update. This logic has executed after update. Who will be telling the trigger that when this logic should be executed? Who will be telling? That is the concept called trigger context variable. Trigger context variable is going to tell the system that 
when the specific logic should be executed when the specific logic should be executed now so trigger context variable is by using this feature we can identify the current state of the trigger so that we can segregate the code to be executed based on the event segregated means which logic should be executed based on the event now trigger context variable has a 10 trigger context variable so one is trigger dot insert trigger dot is insert these all are boolean whatever i'm talking about trigger dot is insert is a boolean trigger dot is update is a boolean trigger dot is delete is a boolean trigger dot is undelete is a boolean trigger dot is before is a boolean trigger dot is after is a boolean and then we have a concept called trigger dot old trigger dot old map trigger dot new trigger dot new map now in the interview you will be confused because we have a trigger events as well as the trigger context variables trigger context variables so sometimes during the interview when they ask a trigger inter a trigger events we say trigger context variables whenever they ask a trigger context variables we will give the trigger events here trigger events here context variable remember this whenever you have a context variable that means expected output is a boolean expected output is boolean how can you get the boolean you need to use the trigger dot is insert is update or is delete okay events are simple straightforward before insert and before update before delete after insert after update after delete after in after undelete events are nothing but dml operations events are nothing but dml operation trigger context variables are not the dml operation it's a boolean value the return type for the this trigger context value is boolean value when to execute the logic right based on the event the segregation of the code so and we can also check what is the old value what is the new value what is the these values we can cross verify we will see this more tomorrow for now this this is the one trigger context variables now what did we learn so far cron and triggers cron expression triggers syntax. events 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 context variables right context variables so that's what we have seen so at least you will get out of this one interview question whatever today we have discussed at least you will get one interview questions